So if you're a Ruby on Rails developer, you must have worked with the params hash, which represents the parameters in Rails. It's a very fundamental and important concept in Rails, and it's good to have some basic understanding of them. So in this video, we will try to understand the parameters, how they work, different types of parameters, and see some real examples to understand them even better. So let's begin. I have a plain Rails project set up here. I just ran Rails new blog, and this is the project. Let's start the server. And if I reload the page, I have the basic Rails app running here. So what are our parameters? So whenever you're building any dynamic web application, you'll always need to access the user submitted data on the backend, right? Maybe uh, the user wrote a comment or uploaded a photo or posted a tweet or clicked a link that includes the ID of the post that they want to see. So how do you access this data on the backend? So that's where parameters uh, enter into the picture. So you, uh, all that data is wrapped up in a object or a hash and that's that object is available on the back end. So there are two types in which you can send the data on the back end. So the first is query strings, other is form submissions. So query strings are whenever uh, you see URLs like a slash post question mark ID equals to or something like that. So that's the query string data. And form submissions, which we'll see later, it's the, is the data that, that uh, your browser sends in the request to the server. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, start uh, coding. Uh, I'll start with uh, just defining some basic routes. Um, oh, one more thing. Uh, so th even though there are these two different ways to send data to the backend, Rails doesn't differentiate on the backend how that data came. So even if you, include send the data using query string or a form submission it all that data is merged into a single hash and it's that's the params hash so uh it, so that all the data is accessible using a single params hash okay to keep things simple okay so let's uh let's add a simple route so let's say i want to route this url posts sample to um, posts controller and the sample method okay so this says whenever a request comes on the post sample url redirect that to posts controller sample method or the action so let's create our posts controller class It extends from or inherits from the application controller. I have the sample. I have the simple sample action, which uh, I'll just render the plain text. So this is a Rails helper. Uh, sorry, render plain. Uh, what this does is renders uh, some uh, text on the screen. So let's uh, just to test things. Let's. Uh, try to go to this URL and you see the output hello world so it's not using any layout or fancy view it's just rendering this string plain text okay so let's uh, change that to uh, render the params hash so I'll use string interpolation to render the params hash as it is uh, and on the next line, let's say I want to print the ID that that's in the params hash. So because it's a hash, you access it like uh, just using the symbol ID. And on the next line, let's say I want to pass another parameter. Let's say I'll call it user. Uh, and it should be in the same way, params user, okay? So let's see what we're doing here. We are rendering and I need to use double quotes because it's string interpolation. 
Okay, so I'm first I'm printing the params hash. On the next line, I'm printing the ID, params ID, and on the next line, I'm printing user, which is params user. Now, if I save that and reload the page, you see first we printed the params and ID and user because now but they are empty because there is no no ID or user in my params hash right now. Okay, it just had params which by default includes the controller and the action. So because I have went to the post sample route, which redirected, uh, sorry, which instructed Rails to handle it using the posts controller sample action, we have the controller posts and action sample. Okay, now let's see how we get this data. So for that, we'll first use the query strings. So let's add a question mark and ID equals three and you separate the parameters using and ampersand and name sorry i need the user user equals ak so if i hit enter now you can see that data got passed into the params hash id3 and user ak and we displayed that data here id3 and user ak like this Okay, so that's the very simple way to access params from the query string parameters. Now, the second way to uh, access for params, sorry, the second way to send uh, data to the backend is using form submission. So for that, let's uh, create another route. We'll have two routes. So first, get posts add, and we'll use the posts add method for that and so this just this will just display a form so let's first do that um, let's add it add method and we, we don't have any we don't need any data here because the view will take care of that so in my posts directory under views let's add the view add dot html dot erb because by default it will try to render this view add, add okay now I'll just uh, paste some form that I have here. It's a very simple form. What it does is action is upload. So when you submit this form, it will try to make a post request to posts upload, right? Like this posts upload because the current route is posts, right? So it will just append whatever the action is. So we need a route to handle that. We'll add that later. Uh, the method is post and this data turbo false is a uh, kind of a different topic uh, we are using the latest rails which uses turbo and there are some redirecting issues that's why i'm just disabling data uh, uh, so disabling turbo using data turbo false attribute ignore that for now so here i have just a few inputs uh, label name and uh, input type text and this name parameter name attribute is important because that's how we will access the data on the back end, which we'll see later. So for now, just uh, we have a label, we have an input and the second form field is we have an email uh, and input type email. So that's it. And we have a button that submits the data to the back end. Okay. And now we need to handle this request. So let's add another route for uh, upload. So it it's going to be a post request and it will be on posts upload and the posts let's say build so build method will take care of that upload data uploaded data so let's add that method dev build okay now let's, uh, let's try to render that again um, now in our form, we have name username and name user email. So let's try to print that. So I need params, I need name and the params instead of ID, I will have whatever the name attribute is. So username, let's get this in a split tab and I will use username as the key to access the value of this email. Then I need the, sorry. Uh, yeah, I need the, 
value of the username. So I'm doing that here and then I need the user email. So I'll use params user email here. Okay. So let's, let's save that and reload the page. Sorry, not reload. Let's go to the add page. Posts add and here's the form. Let's say I enter name ak and email is ak at the rate gmail.com okay and when we submit this data the request will hit the build endpoint and will render the params params username and params user email so let's see if that works oh right uh okay csrf token authenticity which we don't need to worry about that for now but you need to worry about that in production so let's just disable that for now skip before action verify authenticity token and just disable it on build don't do that in a real application this is just to keep things simple and uh, let's go back reload okay get the right hello .com. submit okay there is our backend response so we have let's see we returned we are printing the first the params hash let's see what's the params hash we have the username ak user email ak at the hello.com and like we saw earlier controller and action and after that it prints the name and user which we got from the params hash with the username and the user email keys which we which we used in the name attributes so that's how you use the form submission data you in the params hash okay now what else um you can also redirect from the controller right so a very common question people have when you redirect from an action to another action is how do you uh, how do you access the params data from this action to in another action because the way redirect works is we are not redirecting calling we are not when we redirect from say build action to sample action we are not doing a method call from here to here so that's it's actually sending a response back to the browser some 300 response 302 and the browser makes another http get request to that new action with new params right so how do we send params data from here to here so rails provides a very simple way to do that with the redirect to helper so instead of rendering here let's redirect to and i will use controller posts and action sample because i want to redirect to this action and the way you include the params data from this action in here sorry pass params data from this action to this action is just using uh, passing a simple hash or the shorthand of that so let's say i want to use the um, pass the username i will just use the params hash and pass username and let's say i want to pass the email i'll do the same thing params email sorry user email because that's what we have here so that's how we are passing params uh, data from here to this action you can pass any data basically when redirecting and that data gets uh, rails includes that data in the params hash okay so we are printing params here so let's see if we are able to pass that data here so just to summarize we are, when we submit the form we are now re redirecting to the post sample action and we are passing this data here let's try that so go to posts add and let's enter the data and let's say open the we'll open the dev tools to see what's going on behind the scenes so when i submit it redirected to the sample action and you can see our email and our username was included in the params hash and you can see the way Rails handled that redirect. It basically included that form submission data in the query string parameters. 
because another important thing is you cannot redirect a post request it gets convert for safety reasons and security it uh, rails converts that post request to get and your data is available as query string parameters and you have access to that data in the params hash so that's how you access the parameters when redirecting and uh, that's pretty much it uh, there is another topic for uh, related to parameters called strong parameters it's kind of advanced topic which will, uh, i guess we'll tackle that in the next video but uh, i think that's enough for now i hope that you have a pretty good understanding of how parameters work in rails by now um, to summarize uh, uh, what we learned so far there are two ways to pass data from the browser to the backend first is query string like passing data in the url and the other is passing data from the form form submissions which uses the name attributes and rails doesn't differentiate on the backend between these two types of data it just groups them together in the params hash okay so all right so i hope that was useful and you learned something new in the next video we'll probably see probably learn about strong parameters so okay so if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and uh, see you next time bye now